I used, uh, if you guys know Randy Brown, who's pretty much a top 10 player in um, uh, division, uh, is Randy 185, Jess? One, set, one division, he used to, when he was 14 years old, he wouldn't go to school. He'd tell me in the, in the locker room that he was going to be a UFC fighter. And I used to, dude, go to school, man. And then one time I ended up going to um, Corner in Atlantic City, and Phil was fighting for a belt in the MMA. He's bringing combat, going through the belt. And I remember being backstage and asking, Randy, what are you doing here? And he said, I'm the headliner. And I said, holy shit, he really did make this dream a reality. So uh, it's good to see when people are able to achieve those things. Yeah. Uh, so we had been working where uh, I am, I'm basically sitting down, and I'd like it to be for somebody for everything. Um, and I had some, this is where I had left off, where I had grabbed some form of, of body line, but I'm reading the position of this thumb. Because if the thumb is on here, I won't be able to lift him. I won't be able to go underneath him and pick him up and then isolate a quadrant. So I have to be very vigilant of where this, this thumb and his gripping sequence is on my biceps. So we're imagining he's just touching me just like this. Or I've come into an engagement before he laced his hand that I just touched. Okay, so I'm going to pull him on top of me. I would love to. I got an issue right now that he's big, strong, and he's trying to pass me. I actually want him on top of me. If I can get him on top of me, then I can float his weight very easily. So I have a very particular goal at this point. So as I've landed like this, I, my first gripping point is whatever I can grab. I don't care if it's elbows, obliques, hamstrings, glutes, doesn't matter. I'm just trying to pin myself so tight that when I go supine underneath him, his hands touch above me. So we're going to take it from there. The first one we're going to do is just the reversal off of it. So my first position is this. As I slide myself through and I get him supine, my second grip is I cannot let this guy float past me. So my second grip, the moment his hands touch, is to grab and lace my hands behind him and kill the distance between our chest to chest. So my first reaction is this, to hold. My second reaction after this is to float one leg, not both. So what you're gonna see is this. I'm keeping one leg high, I'm floating at a 45, right? So come back. So as I float, I'm gonna have a particular goal at this point with this hand. So everything has a purpose. Right now my hands are here. This hand's not gonna move because when I float, my hand's gonna be right here. So he should have stayed at this point. He never had a reason to go left or right. This hand has a particular purpose. My shoulder goes high, I have constant pressure on his elbow, and my hand laces over the top. So I have three things working in my favor. My head position is critical because I want to pinch his wrist because I don't know what the next sequence is going to be depending on how he goes. He might try to run out. He might try to back in. He might try to back back. In case I try to turn this into a normal plot, that he might try to run the hip line high. So I have to be very vigilant at what's happening right now. So as I've come through, I've said, my hand's here. So I'm lacing this so deep that I'm blocking him. But now pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm aggressively trying to grab onto this elbow. Or if he comes forward, I'm trying to isolate them and take this leg out. So what you're seeing is exactly this position that we're going to hit a triangle first. So as I'm pushing through, I'm just lacing this on the back of his neck. As soon as I lace on the back of the neck, I'm not going to take his arm and swing it left, right. Don't do any of that stuff. I've laced like this. My first reaction is to grab his head before he picks me up. You do not want to get slammed. Um, and then even in an MMA fighting, uh, we both have a really good friend, uh, Dave Branch. Dave got picked up on a triangle and got slammed really hard. So I don't ever want him to start getting vertical posture. And if he gets vertical posture, I want to be able to lace my legs and start scooping underneath his, his legs, right? So before he goes vertical, because once he goes vertical and he slams, that could be really bad for you. Okay, so pretty simple. We've grabbed, slid underneath. I float, I touch, I float, I isolate. I'm here trying to block this position. I'm taking my leg, grab the head, grab my shin, fix my angle, come underneath. Let's part of it do it. Patterns up, okay? Um, there's a lot of people that aren't getting onto their side. I get you understand what's occurring right now. Is that I've, I've, I would like to submit them. I'm not here to just play a reversal game. And I've, I've taken this out and I'm like this. And I'm turned sideways because I may decide if I was Jared Gordon that I gotta get up and I gotta retract his leg. And my frame is so deep on this line that I'm over the top and I'm turning the hip. The sh 
I'm doing the, the best I can to get that elbow to face that wall. And that's why my lace is so deep over the top because I got to shelf this guy this way. Otherwise, if he has retraction, he comes back. The elbow dictates the shoulder that controls the whole body. So I have to understand what I'm doing. When you first float him out and you're sitting here like this at this angle, when you first floated him out, let me back for a second, yep. you have choices at this point, but it'll determine where you're sitting on, on the deltoid. You're sitting here like this, right? And now I just turn this all the way over that I'm turning sideways because I potentially want to go to a triangle. I potentially might not be able to get this leg out and he's sitting so tight on me that I'm going, you know what, hell with this, I can't get that leg out. And I'm pushing with my other hand to clear this in front of his face, then now I have this arm. I may not do any of those, but I, the reason I'm telling you this is because I'm sitting, I'm sitting almost at a 90 degree angle and I'm not sitting on my I'm supine like this anymore. Is that once I floated, I want to get my hips out because either I want to stand up, I want to hit a triangle, or I want the angle to kick out the base on the far side. Then I'm kicking out these lines on the bottom to turn this over to the other side to break it. So I want to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. So there's some vision behind it. Don't leave your body line where you're still supine at this point. The reason I floated them out was I wanted to get my hips out to attack them. I want to break this arm, right? Even if I want to turn it into a Kimura that I laced it so deep like this and I grabbed onto this elbow line and now I hiked this elbow this way and now his elbow's facing this way. I have open hands. I got both feet on my hips. He's not, he has no way to get athletic again and all I'm doing is controlling the elbow facing this way and now I can pick. Do I want to pull it down and now finish it in a Kimura? Doesn't matter, you could pick it, you're the artist, this is your canvas, you do whatever you want to do. But if I don't have the angle, and I'm sitting like this, let me have you for a second, and I floated him out, I floated him out, and I'm sitting like this, and I'm going, how, how did I get my leg out? You can't, right? Because in the beginning, when you first floated him, there was no vision in how I was doing this. I'm like, okay, I'm out. And now I'm hitting this, or potentially kicking out the shoulder, and then turning this over, and coming back. But I gotta get out on that angle. Otherwise, I can't start picking the things I need to catch later, depending on how I am with this deltoid, right? So if I'm sitting on this deltoid too low, then it, I'm gonna have an issue. So I'm gonna ask you at this point, when you floated him, the mo a second ago, we were like this, right? And I'm sitting so, I'm almost this way, and I had the angle to throw this up. This pocket was open, but when I first floated him this time, let's go the other way now. So when I first floated, I went like this, and I'm sitting here and going, I can't get this leg out. I can't get this leg out here. And that's what someone encountered just a second ago. I'm gonna take the leg out the other way then. Because right now, and I'm gonna ask you to have, understand the feel, because you have to read this deltoid and where you're sitting with the crease. You have to be on that line, that side of the muscle belly. It's almost like a stopper that you're sitting on the crease of the shoulder line. Because once you lose this deltoid muscle and you start going this way, you start losing the control of this elbow. You start losing the chest to chest connection. So now your move is totally different. You should not be trying to do a triangle. The moment you go like this, you, he rotates the shoulder and now he comes back and you're like this going, and you go, man, I almost had him. No, you didn't. Don't even say that. You <laughs> stop that. You did not almost have him, right? So you're sitting here and you have the crease on the float like this and you're this way. So I pair my hands up and he's not driving forward. So instead of me taking this leg out and I can't, it just doesn't, he's too tight on me. So I take it out the other way and I start trying to get my kneecap to face the mat. So my rotations of my elbow, my bottom elbow's got to come out of this pocket. Do not short your elbow because it's my whole body isolating this one limb and hanging on to it that's bringing him over. It's also potentially going to open up the pocket on the far side. If I need this leg to come back into the equation to kick out the lower, the lower leg on the far side. So I'm sitting here like this. I just told you before, I'm sitting on that side of the crease. So I'm reading where I am with this, with the deltoid. I'm still on that side. So as I take this leg out, I start driving this to suck it back in and mount. You should practice. 
getting your leg out and becoming athletic. You should practice. And I know some people on the, bot, on the top will just want to flop over because if it's on tight, you want to flop over. It feels like your shoulder is going to get dislocated, right? So if you're going to take the leg out for the drill, if it's too tight, and you to ask me because I'll put it on ridiculously tight for you if you're not going to do it right for your partner, right? So what I want is that you have it and you can flop over for them, but don't flop until he learns how to be, get to the toe lines here because you got to drive this leg later. So don't, when you're here like this, you're, you floated him at this point. You're like this, sorry. I'm here biting onto it. I'm trying my best not to let go. I'm seeing if I could take my, my right leg out, but I can't, it's too tight. So I start taking it out and start getting up because I want to push with this leg that I'm driving with this leg to push off to mount, right? So I, I also want to be so aggressive that you tripod up if I can't get you over and I have access to bring this leg back in to kick out that far side hip. So I'm, I'm trying to kill you out of this leg because I'm either trying to take your balance out or drive you. This is my, my altering leg at the moment, right? This is just a positional leg that's holding that hip, right? So this leg has a purpose too because I'm so tight on this hip that I'm controlling this. I'm controlling, and at the same time, I'm taking this leg out and rotating my elbows out that I start driving. But imagine I couldn't get him out. I'm like this stuck. Why can't I take this leg back in and get it back to this hip and knock it out again, right? So all I did was control this. So on the second one, when you float them out, you're going to be on that side of the deltoid line. Start to feel it because you have to re-gauge this. If you start losing this, then you may have to pinch his head again, suck him back in. You may have to switch this to Numa Plata. You may have to switch this to deep half guard. You have to re-alter once you lose that deltoid. So on the second one, you could do both of them. You could do the first one, which the first one is a triangle. Second one, someone just asked me, I can't get my leg out. You shouldn't want to take your leg out if you can't get your leg out, right? There was no reason. You should have been at a 45 anyway so that you can see this far side arm if it comes to your chin line. I never want to be supine because if I'm supine at this point, then my chin line has access, my jawline has access, and I don't, have, I don't have access to that hand, and he catches my jawline, and now he drives me the other way, and now he controls my body through the jawline. So I should have been sitting here like this anyway, at an angle, so I'm not sitting here like this, that you throw a big right over the top, and now you caught my jawline, and now I can't do anything about turning back this way. So you should have been at that 45. Try to pay attention to the details. Try to ask yourself, did I capture that? Did I capture that? Did I capture that? I'll yell it out if, it's, if anything will repeat it over and over so it's in your muscle memory. Let's do it, guys. So you're going to have issues that you've done everything, that you've tried to bring this guy up, and now you're doing everything you can, and you realize, like, damn, this guy is too big. Like, it is what it is. You know, like, he's hypothetically, you're five foot eight, five foot nine, he's six foot three. His base is so far out, he's such a large man. You don't have the strength or the size, and you're doing everything you can to suck this leg out through this triangle. You're doing everything you can to drop this leg out of the bottom to bring him out, and none of it. You're going, damn, I'm in third line on my sequencing, and I'm not getting this guy over, and all I had was this angle. So you're going to bring this leg back in, and you're going to kick that hip out, and then you're going to take the arm on the top again. Okay? So you were here. You brought him through. You floated him. You isolate him. You're on that side of the deltoid, and you're trying your best to bring him up. And you're going, shit, I can't get this guy out. So this back leg is just going to come back in. But just one promise is don't forget your tension points on here. You're on that side of the crease, so you're squeezing your elbows together to hold the line on that deltoid. This leg should have constant tension at the crease of his hip. What I want to do is control his hips, right? So I have a, tight, a constant tight tension on the line here. So now I'm taking this leg and I'm going, damn, I can't get this guy over. There's no way. So I take this leg back in. And now that this pocket's open, I attach it to the far side hip, which is going to allow me to drop this bottom hook. So my first reaction is I kick this hip out and we're looking just like this. So, so the only thing I'm going to do is just pull this down to my socket and bend it now. Now I can come back in and start attacking this come on. You okay? Yeah. Okay. Right? Let's go back. He, he must have rolled yesterday. He's incredibly sore. Right? 
Uh, so everything is exactly the same. So you have three sequences. Only thing I ever did was bite onto the shoulder. And now once I floated it, we can paint it a lot of different ways. I showed you all these hypotheticals, like depending on where he was. But on the first float that we went on a 45, okay, I took myself at a 45 also. So now I'm almost at a 90 degree angle. I floated him at a 45. So now I'm playing lines, right? I'm not playing strength for strength. I'm actually floating. I'm adjusting my angles to see what I can read. And now you're going to go into a third sequence. You've pulled him on top, right? You floated him. You isolate him. I'm here trying to take his leg out. It's too tight. I try to take it out the other way. I couldn't get him over. I'm here hiked up in the air. I'm going, damn, I can't get this guy over. And I'm driving and driving. And now, so I take this leg back in and I attach it to this hip. Now this is going to allow me to drop this leg. So the moment I kick this leg out, this leg is going to land right here. Because when you kick this leg out, we're going to look like this. So now I'm just going to clear this guy down and throw this guy back up. This leg is going to be here for a reason. I would love for the bottom leg to catch this calf. But the reason I'm asking you to put this leg in this particular position is because the more I try to take this out of the socket and break it into a Kimura, he's going to jump on me. So I don't want this leg sitting like this. And I'm over here trying to crank. And Ethan does a somersault. And we're sitting here like this and him behind me. And I never latched up my Kimura on it. So I don't ever want that. I want to hold that hip line down until I readjust and lace my Kimura. So I have to do something to hold him down. He's going to lift up on two points. He's going to lift to jump on this leg. And he's going to rise the hip to come over. So I want to get tension on that hip before it goes elevation on me. right? So when I first kicked out this hip, I'm here like this. I kicked out this hip. And now I'm sitting here like this long. Right? So I take this leg. This leg's not going to sit here like this. I catch this hip because as I pull this down, I'm here trying to adjust this. I have this arm. You can't come back because I'm controlling the elbow that's facing in the direction that I told you earlier. And I'm sitting here like this. But if I'm lazy with this, he's going to somersault on me. So I'm holding this line. I would love to hold that far side calf. But the reason I'm not going to emphasize that far side calf, because in the storyline that I told you, he's so much bigger. He's six foot three. How the hell are you going to reach that calf? If, bring that leg to me, right? So if, I, if he's smaller, I can hold that calf line. I can hold the hip line. And now I control him coming over. But if I just told you this storyline about this man being so big, how am I going to reach with that leg onto that calf? Most likely, he's going to be so far out. So I've got to hold this position and control this arm with the elbow facing this way. Now this is going to allow me to race and now rip out. But I don't want this leg just sitting random. So when it went from tight tension to control hip to kill athleticism, this leg comes and just latches on because my control of the hip is now on that guy. And this guy's the guy that's making the next move. So now we're sitting here like this. This will allow me to start lacing this Kimura. Unfortunately, if you lace it, you'll rip it. It's like there's, so no, there's no tension on it. So now you have three. Everything based off of the first move. What was the first move? I just read his hand positions. And then I started my sequences. So you see a lot of times that the game actually starts very early. So when you see like, oh, man. And sometimes when you see high-level players and then they really play each other, you might see like you go, man, I was expecting a superstar match. And then you felt like, I just watched paint dry. I really would have watched that. because it don't, But it has to do with like little things in the beginning. He couldn't get that, that thumb. He kept neutralizing. And then you realize like they're just not pairing up. Neither guy has his first sequence. So you look at it and you go, how could this not have been an exciting match? It's like, this is so boring. It's because the first move. So now start to read it early. Start to have some vision and ideas of what you're doing. Okay? You can do any of them. You can do all of them. You got about seven minutes. Let's drill from beginning to end. Drillers make killers. Don't play your play on this. You're like this. You flow to him. You've isolated him. You like to try to take this leg out. Couldn't come out. Now I'm like this. When you kick this leg out, I was sitting here like this. This is how this is going to look in one move. I'm sitting here like this. I kick this leg out. I extend and pull back down and come right back in. Right? So you're seeing this like this. I'm here. I've kicked this hip out. The moment I kick this hip out, my body extends because I want my wrist to be here. I push it down. I come right back behind it. And now I'm looking for my finish. It's one move. One move back again. I'm like this. Leg was trying to come out. Couldn't make it. Come like this. I'm holding this line. I've touched this hip. As I'm pulling out, I'm going extend, pull down, come back. It's all one move. It's all one move. Moment I've come out, 
I've come out right away. I got to extend out. I'm not going to kick the hip out and stay tight on it because then by the time I go back on it, he's already cleared out on me. He's done something. He's either somersaulted or something, right? It's all one move. So on Wednesday, we'll recapture it again. So it's super smooth. All I'm doing is clearing, getting behind the, the, the wrist line, coming right back in. It's all movement. It's not any form of strength, okay? Um, you got two minutes before we go live. You want to grab water, caffeine, vitamins, any of this stuff.